Hello, this is Brad McIntyre, and you are listening to the Cultivated Playwright Podcast, episode number four. The following scenario may or may not be one that you've experienced. Have you ever been laying in bed and you're about to drift off to sleep? Your body is just starting to relax and your mind starts to drift just a little bit and you get an idea. Or maybe after dinner you're washing the dishes and there standing at the kitchen counter with your hands in the sink, you get an idea. Perhaps you've been in the shower, uh, either uh, you're a morning shower person or an evening shower person, and the warm water is cascading over your hair and over your head, and you get an idea. Or maybe you've been on a long, a long road trip, and you're eating up the highway miles, and the landscape is monotonous, and your mind has time to wander or maybe you're taking a train trip, looking out the window at the landscape, or even riding the Megabus or the Greyhound, and you get an idea. This has happened to me a lot. This kind of uh, barely automatic physical activity that uh, allows the mind to wander. And in the past, I used to get a lot of ideas and I would not write them down. I always had that mistaken fallacy that, that I would be able to recall the idea later, that I could bring it back, that I could remember it. But of course, as is the nature of ideas, I never remembered it. I never was able to recall an idea. If I didn't instantly archive it, if I didn't instantly write it down, if I didn't take notes then and there. Over the last... Uh, decade and a half, I want to say, maybe two decades, I have established somewhat of a system for capturing ideas, for making notes. I didn't know that it was a system actually until I started recording this podcast. Uh, it's only as I, I look around at how I actually capture notes that I realize, yeah, no, I have sort of a, a codified system in place. And so that's what I want to kind of talk about today in the podcast. When I was an undergrad back in college, uh, my freshman year, I lived in a co-ed dorm, and down the hall from me was uh, a lovely young lady. Her name was Chelsea, and for my birthday, right at the beginning of the school year, she gave me a little black sketchbook. It was before the days of moleskin being a popular thing, or maybe even being a thing at all, and it was just a hardback black sketchbook. It had completely blank pages, unlined pages, and I took all my notes in that little notebook, that little sketchbook. I carried it everywhere to all my classes. I had it next to me uh, when I went to sleep at night, and when I woke up in the morning it was standing right there. I put my diary entries in it. I wrote directions to get places, contact information to people I met. I took notes from my classes in that little sketchbook. I wrote down everything. I made doodles and cartoons and little drawings. If I read a book and I found a little passage that I wanted to keep, then I wrote it in that little, that little sketchbook. Uh, it was about the size of current day Moleskin sketchbooks. You know, that five inches by a little over eight inches. And eventually, after a year or two, I filled that sketchbook up. And then I got another sketchbook. Same size, black hardback, blank pages. And a year or two later, I had to fill, I have had filled that up and I got another one and then another one. And now I have a whole collection of these little sketchbooks in my office, sitting on one of my shelves. Uh, I eventually got on the Moleskine train, so to speak. And so one or two of my sketchbooks are the Moleskine with the elastic strap. Currently, my favorite kind of these books is called a uh, I think it's called Lecterm 1917. It's like a Moleskin, but, well, a little bit better. It has page numbers and it has uh, an area to make a table of contents in the front and the, the paper is a little thicker, a little bit better. These are the kind I prefer. 
Anyway, I still carry these sketchbooks with me. I don't carry them everywhere like I used to, but uh, one of them sits at my desk at all times. And occasionally when I head off to the coffee shop or, or know that I'm about to go and do some work, I'll take one of these sketchbooks with me. So this is one way that I keep notes. The other way that I keep notes, uh, especially nowadays over the last maybe half dozen years, I keep these little cardstock quarter sheet size notebooks. They're like field notes, if you're familiar with field notes. Uh, years ago, I got a package of field note notebooks and then I realized I could uh, customize them if I just made my own. So that's what I did. I got some cardstock and a paper cutter and now I make little 24 to 36 sheet uh, quarter size notebooks that I carry around. They're very portable, very flexible. I'm not very precious with them. They, they have coffee stains on the covers and sometimes occasionally I'll lose one and I'll just make some more. But this is what I currently use to take notes. Uh, I have one in my car at all times. Uh, when I travel, they're very lightweight. They're very portable. They don't take up much room. They're, they're roughly the size of a, of a passport. So that's what I carried it to, to capture notes nowadays. And I don't let any ideas get away. I try never to let an idea just pass. And I never ever think to myself any longer, oh, I'll remember it later. Of course, I'll remember it later. I never ever remember an idea. If I don't, if I don't archive it instantly, it escapes. And when I'm writing plays, a long period happens before anything even makes its way onto paper officially, in which the story and the characters and everything is just percolating in the back of my brain. And I get little snatches of dialogue that shows up in my mind or structural notes and I write them down instantly. The other way that I keep notes is I have uh, index cards. I have index cards in a plastic index card holder in my restroom right next to my sink. Uh, in the morning when I get out of the shower uh, or right when I get up and I'm in that groggy stage, sometimes I'll write down ideas. It's in a plastic holder because I don't want to splash water on it, of course. Uh, I make lists, things I have to do that day, uh, people I need to contact. Uh, I write down directions, recipes, both for food and drinks. Uh, on these index cards. I also keep uh, another index card holder on my desk and I use it sort of like scrap paper. And I find index cards are great. They're easy to tuck into your pocket. They're the uniform size. So uh, unlike just random scrap paper, all index cards are the same size. And so I use them as all purpose kind of note taking tools. Uh, it should be pointed out that I am not precious and snobbish with how I take notes because I also use a lot of digital technology. So I constantly have my cell phone on me and I take pictures uh, using the, of course, the, the picture taking app on the phone, but I also use Evernote. Evernote is uh, basically, if you're not familiar with Evernote, I encourage you to check it out online. Evernote, all one word, is a note-taking application, a kind of an all-purpose note-taking application. And uh, I have it installed on all of my devices, my, my Kindle, my smartphone, my laptop, uh, my tablet. Anything that I might carry around with me has Evernote installed on it. And in Evernote, you can type in notes, you can take a picture, and the picture will instantly send the scan to Evernote. And if I'm using my smartphone, I can even write there's like a handwriting version of it where I can write notes with my finger if I'm in a super hurry. Evernote is actually where all of the notes eventually end up. So if I'm working on a particular project, uh, I keep track of what pages in my sketchbooks, be they the black hardcover ones or the field note equivalents uh, or the index cards any notes that I've taken on a particular project get put in a, in a file folder on Evernote so that they're all compiled together at the end. Uh, so that when I'm eventually writing down a play or any kind of project, I have all the notes in one place and I can kind of access them. 
that way. If they're written on the note, the note cards, or if I'm written them in the little field notebook or the sketchbook, I will sometimes take pictures of it, or I will retype it into Evernote. Anyway, Evernote's kind of my collection place for all my notes, and that's where they all ultimately end up at. Anyway, that's my note-taking uh, system, so to speak. The, the index cards, the little field note equivalent notebooks, uh, the black hardback uh, moleskin kind of sketchbooks, and then, of course, Evernote, everything into Evernote. If you, if you have a system in place, I encourage you to pay attention to how you use it. It's kind of interesting to, uh, to kind of analyze how ideas are collected. And, uh, and if I've given you any ideas, feel free to use any and all of them as well. But uh, I just thought I would uh, point that out. Inspiration does not come easily. Very seldom does it come at an invitation. It doesn't just show up when you want it to. Inspiration has to be, oh my gosh, it has to be wrestled down sometimes. Or it just shows up completely out of the blue and you have to be ready for it. You have to be prepared. And when an idea shows up in your head, when an idea comes to you, you have to be ready to record it, ready to write it down. And so I encourage you to, uh, to have a note-taking system uh, for yourself. And uh, I really appreciate you listening to this episode of the podcast. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm trying to do these about once a week. Uh, feel free to check me out on my website, bradmcintyre.com. There you can find links to all my social media accounts. Uh, including Instagram and Tumblr and such. Uh, you can also find links to my plays on Amazon. I've published a couple of them as, as uh, in ebook formats. So feel free to check that out as well. Anyway, once again, thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.